at a time when money is tight then really this model is certainly worth giving a second look to. A big hello to you! Welcome back to the channel, I'm Jennifer Kirk, welcoming you up here to the loft on Weir Yard. Now today we're going to be continuing our run of hunting out those bargains, wherever they may be. And today my sights have turned on Kerno Model Rail Centre. I've spotted one of their special commissions. It's a locomotive and it's at a really keen price. And it's one that they've had in stock for quite some time. They've sold through an awful lot of these. There were a number of different liveries. They're down to just two. But at £69.99, I really couldn't turn away from these. I've been looking at them for quite some time. So today is the turn of the 1361 class locomotive to go through the honest appraisal. Is it worth the money? Well, I'm going to be putting it to the test today. So come with me in association with Tramfabrique, makers of DCC decoders and accessories that are designed by enthusiasts for enthusiasts. Find the full range available to order now at tramfabrique.co.uk. Support also comes from TMC, the Model Centre. Check out their comprehensive and fully stocked website at themodelcentre.com. For project ideas, why not look at their airbrush offers at the link in the description and have a go at creating your own weathering and graffiti masterpieces. It couldn't be simpler. And let's see, does the 1361 class from Kerno Model Rail Centre live up to expectations and is it worth that knockdown price of £69.99? We'll also be doing a full DCC fitting guide too, so stay tuned towards the end third of this video if you're looking for advice on how to do that. <laughs> One of the things that keeps on coming up in conversation about the hobby is just simply what things cost. So it's one of the things that I really like to do is to search out the great bargains. And my eye has been drawn to this particular model on the Kerno Model Rail Centre website and it is a special commission uh, that they commissioned a little while back now in a number of different liveries. I think actually because the 1361 saddle tanks were quite a small class of locomotives. They actually produced um, pretty much every member of the class in a variety of liveries to cover not just photographic grey but right through the Great Western Railway liveries and the BR liveries. Now they are available at a really great price and this is twofold. Firstly um, they've had them in stock for a little while and as prices have gone up for new items the older items have remained at that original price so that makes them comparatively a better and better buy. But Kerno Model Rail Centre have also discounted the final two livery versions of the models that they've got and that means that this particular locomotive despite being a special commission is available at £69.99. Now the catalogue number on here we've got K2201 the GWR 1361 class a bit of an unusual class number uh, these and the 1366 class kind of departed from the normal Great Western nomenclature for classes um, but uh, this is in the BR Black Late Crest. Now they've also got the BR Black early crest and uh, I have asked and Kerno models have said that it's perfectly fine to show you some of their photographs of the other livery version now they are both exactly the same price so uh, whether you want early crest or late crest or indeed maybe even both of the models because they are different running numbers uh, they are there at the 69.99 pound mark now uh, I'll show you the exploded diagram and it does go to show and I, I do like to show these because it does go to show just how much goes into 
one of these models and these are far more than basic locomotives that we would have seen back in the 1980s even into the 1990s. These are precision models and this exploded diagram really goes a long way just to reiterate that we've got a complete listing there should you need any of those spare parts. The boxes that Kurnow Model Rail Centre have their uh, special commission locomotives in are um, pretty good actually, very resilient, robust, and these items are coming through the post really well. Now these, you can actually buy these separately, it's um, a detailing pack, but they do come as standard in with the locomotive, so we've got uh, the shovel and uh, we've got an assortment of fire irons and uh, these are actually etched metal and then painted so you can very carefully clip these out and use them to detail your model. They are also available separately I've noticed on the website so you can also buy those for use on other models too. Inside the slip case there we've got uh, the blister packaging and it's just an ordinary clamshell blister package and uh, we've got some extra detailing here. I'm just going to show you those. So we've actually got some lamps which are really nice. They do look good. And then we've got some vacuum standards and uh, also appear to have front and rear couplings too. So there's an assortment of different parts there that you can fit if you want or leave in the bag if you don't. And uh, I will investigate uh, some of those. I think um, certainly the vacuum standards do really improve the look of any locomotive. Straight out of the box, what is apparent is that there is a good weight to this locomotive and it really does look quite resplendent. Now, the eye is drawn to a number of things on this. Firstly, I do like the under boiler detail. There's quite a lot going on there, and the red bar does really uh, bring out some of that detail. Looking to the other side, a little bit more open, and I actually really like those springs. I'm sure it's got them yeah, they are on this side as well, but with the toolbox and I think that's something like the injector, uh, you don't really get to see them much, but on this side, I do like the spring detail. Look at that there, all separately applied parts, and with the air underneath, the boiler, they really do look pretty nice. The coupling rods on these locomotives and uh, the cross slides as well, uh, they're actually a kind of a gunmetal grey colour and uh, normally you'd see these kind of uh, shiny metal but then black, chemically blackened. These do appear to have been made from a metal that's uh, got a uh, much more gunmetal type colour to them and actually it does really quite work. One thing that I might be a little bit worried about is you can see the elongated holes just there where the pins go through the connecting rod and my inclination would be to put a tiny drop of oil in there just to stop any premature wear because there's not really a lot of metal to wear away uh, before those would come loose. Now I'm not saying that that's a problem it's just something that I'm quite surprised the amount of play that is uh, available there. A little bit peculiar We've got an all metal cross slide here and uh, that actually is again really really nice. Looking to the front face of this locomotive it is captured really really well with a stovepipe chimney. Those holes on the buffer beam for the additional detail parts are very very visible so one thing that I would say is that this model definitely definitely would be much improved for the fitting of the vacuum standards but shouldn't be too difficult whatsoever to fit them. Again on the back buffer beam we've got the holes for the vacuum standards and another area I really am quite impressed at we've got these hooks which would be for some of those uh, fire irons and it's a really interesting place to really show them off but these are all metal by the feel of it and certainly they're quite resilient. The lamp brackets too, underneath and above, 
again separately applied and uh, they actually do look really really good the lamp brackets uh, are a very distinctive shape captured well and the rivet detail at the center of the bunker really does stand out quite well the black finish it's not too shiny, it's not plasticky, it really is perfectly done. It looks a kind of a satin finish and this locomotive does look good in its clean X-Works uh, condition that it comes out of the box. But I'm sure a little bit of light weathering would really bring this alive. Looking across the top of the uh, saddle tank there, there's a lot of separately applied detail. The water filler has its separate little uh, kind of screw lock piece on there. We've got the very, very typically Swindon safety valve bonnet. And um, that's, that does look a little bit um, painted, which yes it is, but um, the, the color on there, it um, doesn't quite scream highly polished brass to me. There's something not quite there with the color, but it is certainly close. Now, I got told off when I reviewed the 1366 class for not trying to take the roof of the cab off. This does feel like it should come off. Um, I'm just looking there. I'm wondering, does that unclip? And I'm not entirely sure. It looks like it should. I don't want to force it. I have bought this model with my own money. So um, it would be um, a little bit embarrassing to uh, uh, have my incredible Hulk grip just rip it apart on camera. Uh, I'd feel very disappointed. So I'm not going to push that any further. I'm sure somebody in the comments will let me know. The flush fitting of the glazing does look pretty reasonable on the cab front. There is a slight curviness around the edge. It sort of curves in. It's not too noticeable. Bear in mind what you're seeing on your screen is much bigger than the real thing. The rear cab windows, you don't really notice that. I do like these bars separately fitted over the top and um, that is actually a really good effect. Inside the cab, let's just see. We've got full back head detail and that is actually really, really nice in there. We've then got, uh, they feel like etched plates. Yeah, they are factory fitted etched plates by the look of it. So we've got 1361. This is the doyen of the class. Um, so it is the class number as well as the actual locomotive number. That is a nice touch, although there's just a little smattering of, I don't know, is that glue around the edge? Difficult to tell. It doesn't appear to be on that side. There's just ever so slight smidgen just along the bottom. But again, it's really small. You just don't see that from normal viewing distances. The uh, ferret and dart board there is reasonably well done. We're not getting the shading on the lion that I've seen from other manufacturers. It is quite a flat red finish, but this is an earlier locomotive. It has been around for a little while, and that's still a credible rendition of the later BR Crest. Another area which I quite like are these steps, and they are actually molded as part of the running plate and are incredibly robust, which is good to see. So no worries about these getting caught, pulled off, and needing to be re-glued rather messily. We've also got those gussets at the front and back, just uh, on the real locomotive. These would have been strengthening for the buffer beam, but they are captured really nicely. Looking through to the chassis, there's not a lot of detail there, but the black finish does kind of hide it from the eye. Although we do get these substantial brake blocks and the associated assembly, which do look really, really nice. At the front of the locomotive too, I can't help but notice these very substantial uh, guard irons. And these, again, very robust, very distinctive, and it's just nice to see them included. Looking at the back of the model as well, we've got a further set there, just as per the prototype. Looking down uh, from the top, there's certainly a lot of detail going on on there. It really does look good. There's a little bit of a line across the top of the boiler. I think that that is prototypical 
where the actual boiler cladding, or at least the tank cladding, would butt up. And uh, we've got all metal handrails, another lamp bracket on the front, more lamp brackets across the buffer beam there. And it's also got these very unique looking blast pipes. From the cylinders, these would have led into the blast pipe in the uh, smoke box to create the draft. And they've got a very, very distinctive shape that has been captured really well. On the front there, we've got again the number 1361. And the shed code is legible, 83D. Nice sharp printing on the silver. We've got sprung buffers, and actually there's a good amount of spring on them. They're not too weak. Uh, and if you are going to use these, and certainly that drawbar hook there is uh, metal by the feel of it, so perfectly usable, then uh, these are actually a decent spring to them. There's no sign of them sticking. So all in all, pretty good. Looking to the underside of the locomotive, we do get that brake rigging fitted as standard from the factory. We've also got what appear to be some additional metal pipe work, which actually goes through a hole in the running plate. We get that either side. Uh, I'm not sure actually whether I caught that, but that does appear to be quite springy and you can bend it back into shape. It's not gonna to cause too big an issue. Uh, we've also got lubrication down into all three of the axles and I'm beginning to see why there might just be a little bit of slack going on on these connecting rods and that's because we appear to have all wheel drive but there's a lot of slack in that drive system and it'll be interesting to see how this performs on track. Certainly I can see gear drive it would appear to all wheels and that may actually take uh, a lot of strain off these connecting rods so actually they can be what appears to be scale thickness. Couplings are slimline tension locks in a NEM pocket it does have a little bit of springy movement to it although the NEM pockets are a little bit peculiar um, they just look quite rounded there to me um, that's not a problem, um, they just have a quite a distinctive look to them. Um, and as far as I can tell, they do work quite well with other makes of uh, tension lock couplings. Looking across the back of the cab, again, there's lots of detail in here. I do like that handbrake stanchion. So all in all, really, really nicely done. When it comes to DCC fitting, this locomotive has a little trick up its sleeve and it's something that we've seen on newer models a reasonable amount. But what has to be remembered is this is pretty much, as far as I can tell, this and the BT well tank were where it started. And I have to give my hats off to effectively Kerno Model Center who um, did initially commission the BT well tank, which I think was the first and have carried that over into later models, this really, really innovative system for DCC fitting. Now, we're getting a little bit ahead of ourselves here. For the DCC fitting, I'm going to be using from Tramfabrik, and you'll find a link to them in the description box down below. I'm gonna be using the Doula and Haas micro six pin decoder, and you can see that it's absolutely tiny. And I'm using this because I have it to hand. They are supplied through Tramfabrik along with the regular Trainomatic range. And what we do recommend is that the six pin micro Trainomatic decoder is more than able to fit into this locomotive. I'm simply using this because I happen to have this in stock. Um, but you can use that micro decoder just as effectively. To DCC fit, we actually don't really need any tools whatsoever. Just use a fingernail to very carefully prise the smoke box door away from the front of the smoke box. And it's as simple as that. There are two little magnets there, very, very powerful neodymium magnets, and there's a metal plate in the back of the door. We do have some locating lugs as well. 
so this will self-locate quite readily but when you pull it off do not pull it by the smoke box dart because that is actually quite fine uh, it does feel like it's made of metal but it won't stand up to abuse being used to pull the front off inside the front of the locomotive we've got a daughter board now this isn't like on later models where they kind of perfected this but we kind of have to fish in here and very very carefully just pull this out i'm using a pair of tweezers but there's not a huge amount to grip onto and it is a tight fit now you'll find that this comes out on a wiring loom and you don't get a huge amount of extra wire actually if we just untwist that that's a bit better and you'll see on the blanking plate there we've got the six pin blanking plate in this daughter board so we're going to just pull that out and make a note there pin one is on this right hand side pin six is on the left hand side make sure that you don't stress any of the wires and that should just rock its way clear so we're just going to quickly take our six pin decoder and these are very very tiny very carefully line this decoder up and just very very gently and it doesn't need any force whatsoever we're going to push that all the way home and then it's simply a case feeding that wire back in just gently pushing that daughter board back into place and I'm just going to make sure that it's there just hooked behind the lip so it can't force the smoke box door back out and then very carefully locate the smoke box door you'll feel it just clip itself in and there we have it fully DCC fitted and no real substance of tools required maybe just something like a pair of tweezers if you need to just to fish out that daughter board the locomotive itself is now ready for the programming track it will be programmed to number three by default or you can change it now on the programming track to a number of your choice I'm actually going to use its running number 1361 so we turn now to the scores. First up is build quality and actually despite a lot of quite fine detail on this model there's not really been anything that's been any the worse for wear for my heavy duty handling during this review. The only areas really were these pipes that just stick down here but they do bend back into place. We've had nothing come off, we've had nothing come unstuck and actually that's quite pleasing uh, quite often in this day and age we get a locomotive out of the box to find that some of the detail might have come a bit loose or perhaps when picking it up off the track something goes ping and you find a very slender piece of plastic has come loose so far none of that really with this and with the uh, pipe at the bottom really the only major area I'm going to give this a 9.5 out of 10 on running quality the locomotive did suffer a bit with a strange kind of whine that increased and decreased with speed I'm thinking that this might be something to do with that transmission that drives through gears to all of the axles and it does mean that if you are in a very quiet room and your layout has just this locomotive running it's going to sound a bit peculiar and it does stand out somewhat the running characteristic of the locomotive wasn't really unduly affected and actually it did run reasonably well with only a few areas where it felt that maybe it needed to run in just a bit more. Slow speed running of this locomotive is actually surprisingly good and reasonably smooth. I found that you could get it to run right down to a crawl quite effortlessly in both directions and that really is a good plus point. 
There was a small amount of hesitancy on one of my insole frog points, which can probably be put down to the fact that this locomotive hasn't yet been fully run in and does have quite a small wheelbase. So I've got every hope that that will go away with a little bit more running. But that motor wind does leave me wondering why did they choose to spec this model with all wheel drive? It does seem to be departing from the norm and I've not seen it from any of the other manufacturers, so maybe it doesn't give any real advantage, but it does seem to bring with it that strange whining noise. So I'm gonna give this an 8.0. Next up, we come to DCC fitting and innovation. And I have to say, I really do like that daughter board that's inside the smoke box door that's held on with two magnets. It makes DCC fitting this model an absolute doddle and you don't have to risk any of the detail to try and dismantle it to get inside. It does look like there's surprisingly more space inside than I initially first thought and whilst I've used a Dula and Haas micro six pin decoder there actually seems on closer inspection to be enough space inside there to maybe even contemplate fitting a very small stay alive too. So certainly this locomotive has a lot more to give. And I'm gonna give this a 9.8 out of 10 for that really easy DCC fit. On accuracy and quality of finish, I really do like this model. It captures the look and feel of the 1361 class really, really well. The only areas that really I could fault was that touch of glue, and it really is slight underneath that etched nameplate. And you have to reward them for going for a factory fitted etched nameplate. It's just a shame that maybe some of that glue is just eased out ever so slightly. The ferret and dartboard too does feel like there's not quite enough relief on there compared with what we've become used to, but certainly it is a great effort. And all in all, I'm gonna give this a 9.2. On value for money, this is an area that this model shines. At 69.99 for a special commission, that is brand new, out of the box, fully guaranteed, the works, we just aren't gonna see that kind of money for small steam shunting locomotives again. So I'm gonna give this 10 out of 10. Get them while you can. As we said at the beginning, there's two different livery versions available of this model. One of them is this model with its late BR crest, and the other one is with the Cycling Lion early emblem, both of which are at exactly the same price on the Kerno website. That gives us a final score of a very respectable 46.5. And we've got a, a link in the description box down below to help you out to find this and its sister with that early BR crest. So get them while you can. And the price they're at, they're not really going to hang around that much longer. And certainly from what I've found with this locomotive, you won't be disappointed. It gets a thumbs up from me. And also, whilst you're on the Kerno website, why not have a browse some of their other items? I did, and I picked up this 38 326Z, the 13 ton high sided open wagon, which is one of their exclusive special commissions. I'm a huge fan of these, and over the years, I've picked up a whole host of their special edition wagons, and I've not been disappointed by any of them. Certainly, they are a great addition to Weir Yard and anybody's layout and give you that great variety in rolling stock. At uh, just a shade under £25, along with the 1361 class locomotive, it really didn't break the bank and including postage, came in at under £100. I hope you really enjoyed today's video and found it informative as well. And if you really like the look of this diminutive 1361 class locomotive, then we've got a link in the description box that takes you to Kerno Model Rail Centre. And we're not affiliated in any way. This is being bought as a mystery shopper using the very generous money that's been provided through the Patreons to the channel. So it is entirely independent. And uh, I'd love to hear from you and hear what you thought about this model. Now, is this something that you've already got one of these? Maybe you really like the model that you've had for quite some time. 
Or indeed, is this a model that you've watched this video and thought, actually, that worked really, really well. All those scare stories that have been peddled just don't seem to hold up. And that's a model that I might like to try as well. I'd love to hear from you guys too. But uh, until next time, this is me, Jenny Coates, saying you take great care of yourself. Happy modelling. Bye for now. Today's video comes in association with Trainomatic, makers of DCC decoders and accessories that are designed by enthusiasts for enthusiasts. Find the full range available to order now at tramfabrique.co.uk. Support also comes from TMC, the Model Centre. Check out their comprehensive and fully stocked website at themodelcentre.com. For project ideas, why not look at their airbrush offers at the link in the description and have a go at creating your own weathering and graffiti masterpieces. It couldn't be simpler. I'd like to send out a huge thanks to everybody who supports me on Patreon. And an extra special huge thanks goes out to Anthony Kidson, Offshore Allen, Michael Lockie, Helen Sink, Gary Lewis, David Quinn, Sparky107107, George Botterini, Chris Moss, Robert Steers, Sam Yates, Dale Williams, John N. from NC, NYM Arish, Jonathan Foster, Peter, Clifford Ison, Larry W. Grant, NI Railways 4000 class, Ian Coulson, Alan Dickerson, Eddie Papert, Karen Nicholl, Medwin Williams, Crossways Point Junction, 3B Rail, and Jennifer Garrett. Thank you. Without you guys, I couldn't do this.